Howdy, howdy, lads, MBs, and lasses. If you live in the Harris Branch neighborhood in Austin, Texas, my name's Anthony, and I'm still your neighbor. This is a monthly update from the Residential Harris Branch HOA meeting for March. These videos come out once a month, so hit subscribe, like, so that way you get notified when they are uploaded. In addition, there are all the links below in the description to important information and groups that are community resources that I highly recommend you reach out or become parts of, so be sure to check those out below. As you can see, these meeting notices go out before the meeting. They are every third Thursday of the month. You are always welcome to join simply by clicking the Zoom link until we end up having them in person again. But remember, we will keep the Zoom link available so that way you don't have to go over to the Amenity Center to participate. This meeting was a little bit different. This was a community meeting. Normally these have been held, if you've been here for a while, they were held in the elementary school next to where the gym is or the pool. That was a trade-off we were doing with them where the kids from there on their graduating end of year classes would get to use our pool as long as we got to use their, their lunch hall for our community meetings. However, since we started building the new amenity center, that transaction has ceased. So this one was a little bit smaller than many of the usual community meetings. And these meetings are really focused on homeowners. So there was not a lot of business that gets handled here. These are intended more for you to show up and tell us what's going on in the neighborhood or tell us your thoughts on things that you think we need to do or are doing well, praises or complaints sorts of things. One welcome and board introduction. Mike, the president, went over and introduced all the board members that were present. David Alley was not present at this meeting. Two, call meeting to order, establish quorum. We had enough board members present to establish quorum. Therefore, we were able to move forward. Three, approve the prior February 16th meeting minutes. Vanessa is our secretary. She went ahead and typed those up and those are approved. We moved on to number four, the treasurer's report. At this point, we still do not have a treasurer. The treasurer's report for this year has continued to be covered by Mike. These budgets are posted on next door, so you're always welcome to go and see them and see where our money is going. These reports normally, especially in meetings like this, we sort of just go over things that show up as a variance or something that may jump out to us as a unexpected cost or something that is not budgeted for. So with that in mind, Mike explained we had a postage credit for 492 bucks for fees that were collected for certified mail. Those are fees that our attorney collected back from homeowners that ended up being served notices and those get charged to the homeowner and then the attorney has to recover those back and give them back to the HOA. There was a pond maintenance expense in property. The pond maintenance, this is the one out there by the Harris Branch Parkway. The fountains out there have been having issues. In one instance, a fish had made it into the pump itself, uh, causing it to gunk up. At this time, a lot of maintenance has gone into it where they've had to pull the pump, they had to fix the piping, and then on top of it, there's an actual well pump that has been having issues in the sense that it's not holding pressure or the motor burned out. We had a lot of issues during the ice storms that caused additional damage to those things, and we had been waiting on parts for a majority of this time. However, those repairs have been moving forward and I believe should be coming towards an end if not already completed by the time this video is posted. We had an expense of $2,000 on utility leaks. This, of course, was a broken main or broken line for our sprinkler system. Another L in the sense that we are wasting a lot of money and water on trying to keep our grass green instead of using alternatives that we could maybe mitigate these costs and not use our drinking water for. My understanding is with those sprinklers, that leak was detected and repaired by the president's report. Mike went ahead with the neighborhood updates. We have finished the repair to the Thistle Hill Monument. That's that monument out there by the fire station near Harris Branch Parkway. There was a bunch of cracks in the foundation of that as well as the wet stacked wall. He talked about the food trucks. We still have those on Fridays. There's a Facebook group that you can join or that you will get a notice, an email update from Town Square telling you exactly what food truck will be out there. So be sure to go out if you see something on the menu that you like so that way we can keep inviting those food trucks back. Another item that was completed and discussed in the president's report was the lighting at the monuments at Meadowview and Lakeview. So you should be able to see those monuments at night with the lighting that has been completed and installed. E, we've had the tennis court locks have been completed. That was our $6,500 investment into very expensive locks. I actually was able to take a picture of it so you can see the overkill. You will also notice that no one is on them. 
I believe making things harder for people to use discourages their use, but those have been completed. F the Samsung leak. I was also able to see the kiosk that Samsung installed. I was not able to make it over to the area that they had rehabilitated. I'll put up the picture that I took of the kiosk at the amenity center so you can pause the video and read over that. We ended up having a rule adoption as far as transfer fees, and this was put forth and adopted by the board in the HOA because of quick cash transactions that were happening with homeowners selling to large corporations or firms that were coming in and purchasing homes and then turning around and flipping them or renting them out while retaining that home for their own portfolio. If you are in the market to sell, please don't sell to these firms. Please sell to individual homeowners so that way the housing stock doesn't get held up by these large conglomerates that will inevitably never return it back to us, the common folk. That rule adoption mentioned earlier is something to prevent that sort of thing from happening. It forces those firms to go through an inspection from the HOA and our management company before they can turn around and sell or rent out that house. The cable internet for the new amenity center was run and completed. The 2021 audit was completed. The 2023 budget was completed. The amenity center rental program was approved. These are all things I've talked about in previous videos. The pool room cleanup and rewire was completed. We had the phase three stain and seal of the Harris Branch Parkway fences. Those should be done. The new lifeguard vendor is pulling Heinz. We are in the process of resurfacing the pool, repairing the coping on the pool, and finding a leak at the pool that has caused uh, an issue with the pool maintaining pressure. Our understanding from the vendor and the contractor that is doing the work is it should still be good to go for the opening on the weekend of May 21st. So fingers crossed that we don't run into any further issues. And that wrapped up the president's report. This, especially during the community meeting, it usually ends up being us sharing with the community what projects we have completed over the last year or the previous board had completed, as well as ones we've completed during this year. So it's just a recap. Most of the stuff I've talked about in previous videos. So if you've been following, you already know the details on most of those. Six, the community manager report from Raquel. She provided, she shared our projects list. We have a project list. I believe that is posted Town Square as well. Uh, talks about the things that we are working on and things that we want to complete. These being green, the green wall. This is something I've talked about in regards to the Farm Haven and St. Marion roads where we want to end up doing small trees, bushes, tall grasses, basically landscaping that so you no longer have to take a look at the uh, myriad of fences in their different states of existence. The additional piece there was the fitness repairs. That has been an issue too. I know we have been kind of slow in response to repairs. One of the main reasons for that has been getting parts. Unsurprisingly, that continues to be a major issue in almost all of the instances where we need to fix things parts seem to continue to be hard to get or on backlogs that are unusual from what we have been used to prior to 2020. One of the other projects is underway, almost completed. We've got um, signs approved for the swim at your own risk, the uh, no illegal dumping in certain areas where we're having that issue. Those will both be in Spanish and English, as well as the green space educational sign that will be up so that way folks can understand what's going on in areas that are not being mowed to oblivion. Seven, the committee reports neighborhood representatives. David was not there. There is no update. The fence committee, again, the only update was the phase three sh is complete at this time. So the fences should be all done minus where we are working through the ones that were damaged by the trees during the last ice storm. That has taken longer than expected because we have to go through our insurance company to get approval for those. I've already took, taken pictures of the ones that I was able to see and sent those on to Raquel so that way we can get those over to the insurance company and have those wrapped up soon. The C, architectural change. There is no update there. D, the amenity center expansion. Mike shared that we are just waiting for cut-ins for the ADA-approved ramps, waiting for the concrete to cure, the bike rack to be completed. I, my understanding is Raquel has gotten the blueprints from the city of Austin, and so we are nearing our certificate of occupancy where she can start to be working out of there, and that space can be opened up to homeowners for use as well as board meetings in the future. E, the communications. Vanessa requested reports from Goodwin on open requests uh, to Goodwin. This was in response to questions from homeowners about those 
requests being opened then closed even when homeowners felt that they hadn't been completed. So the board is going to be reviewing those with Raquel so that way we make sure everything is getting taken care of uh, and you're not getting lost in the weeds. Uh, I know sometimes they get closed and the resolution may not be something that we necessarily agree with, especially as a homeowner, but I have to understand sometimes that is the resolution in some instances. Eight old business, you probably have already experienced the garage sale by the time of this posting. I think those signs are still out there. I know there was talk on Nextdoor and I'd reached out to the individual about his inquiry into those signs in possibly Bellhaven having a community garage sale too. Ideally, that would be great for all of us if they also aligned their garage sale with ours so we would get even more traffic because there'd be additional communities participating. And I haven't heard back from him on that, but that may be something we do in the future. Another piece of old business was the Easter event. This again is Mike's baby. He does this every year. This time it was not on Easter Sunday. He had family matters to attend to, so we moved it to the first. Him and his wife put it on for the most part. They set up the hot dogs and served those. They coordinated the ponies and face painting and bouncy house. So I'll post some videos and pictures that I took of the event. Um, always a good time, I think, for the kids, as well as, I forgot to mention, the egg hunt. So that's something that Mike puts on every year. Nine, new business. Not a lot was discussed. Some items that I'm wanting to get on the new ed business agenda is planting trees along Blue Goose between the dump and the homes over there near Parkside. Homeowners have reached out to possibly getting a green wall in that area to reduce the loud truck noises and kind of hide the lovely trash mountain over there. Uh, if you don't like that trash mountain, make sure you're reducing and reusing, otherwise it will keep growing. Another homeowner reached out to me and I've been talking with them in regards to possibly doing a white list of homes that have submitted and been approved for Xeriscaping slash green spaces. These would be things that would have to be vetted. Ideally, we would have the city of Austin approval for your reimbursement for the Xeriscaping or waterwising, and then that white list would share be shared with the Goodwin drivers, so that way they would no longer hit you with your grass is too tall as long as it was a native grass and well-maintained in the sense of a native landscape. So that's something that we could possibly be working up in the future. The last piece, not new business, but has been completed, was the storm cleanup. That was something that took a long time. I discussed this in the previous video, but that should all be done at this point. I think there's only one or two areas that still need to be done that the company that we hired to do it is coming back out to complete at this time. 10, the homeowner forum. This is normally the biggest part of the community meeting session because we normally have a large turnout, I think somewhere upwards of 35. However, with this uh, online meeting, we only had a two or three homeowners. One of them uh, had mentioned that, here we go again with the turf grass, in our sprinkler system to make green carpet being a problem and cost sink for us. One of those pipes broke and flooded the yards of homeowners causing damage to their yards. And they were asking what we could do in the future to prevent that. My solution would be to turn it off completely. However, working with the rest of the board, we were able to come up with sending out a notice with instructions for homeowners in that area on where the turnoff valve is located, how to turn it off, and the authorization for them to turn it off in the event that they notice that it's leaking and to notify us so we can then go out and repair it. I think this is the best method as opposed to calling a board member or Sunscapes or whoever and waiting for them to come over. The folks on the ground who live there are always gonna be the fastest responders. And if we can give them the tools to address the issue when it arises, makes things so much easier. We save a lot of money in water and they save a bunch of headache and heartbreak over their destruction of flooded yards. One of the other homeowners who spoke up talked about complaints with the dog park. These have been discussed multiple times in previous videos by me. I am on that dog park committee. Uh, seems everybody who talks to about this and then we invite to join the committee does not want to join. That all being said, I am still working with Sunscapes and Raquel to get more trees, larger trees out there with water run to them and bubbler systems. So that way we can speed up that shade process and get that grounds taken care of in the sense that we'll have better retention of water and that soil as well as better shade to keep it from drying out. 11, adjourn meeting. So this meeting again was a community meeting. Not a lot of business was discussed. It's more of a opportunity for you to come and voice your opinions, praises, or complaints. And thus we adjourned the meeting.
Hopefully this video has helped keep you up to date on what's going on in the neighborhood. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that way you'll get a notification when the next one comes out. And as always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or praises, please put them in the comments section below. I will do my best to respond to them or get you answers in a timely manner. And with that all being said, y'all stay safe out there. Take care. Bye.